We're following breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. Out of Major League Baseball, the New York Yankees finalizing a deal to acquire outfielder Jazz Chisholm in a trade with the Miami Marlins. That's been confirmed by our Jim Bowden. The electrifying Chisholm adds an element of speed to a Yankees team that is second to last in baseball in stolen bases. He has 22 stolen bags himself this year and is batting 249 with 13 home runs. Let's bring in our MLB insider Jim Bowden for more on this. Jim, first to start off with your reaction here as the Yankees are set to acquire Jazz Chisholm from the Marlins. Yeah, Jazz Chisholm could be the best position player traded this deadline, especially if the White Sox decide not to trade Lewis Robert. But this is a big move for GM Brian Cashman as he trades his top catching prospect, Augustin Ramirez, who is considered their top three or four prospect in the entire organization. Two other prospects are in this deal. Uh, they have not been announced yet because they have not been informed that they have been traded. But the Yankees are getting an impactful offensive player. He's a guy that can profile the 20 homers, 20 steals, maybe even 30 homers, 30 steals. They're going to control him for two more years, so this is not a short-term deal. He's in his prime years, and there were some concerns about how he would handle a big market like New York. I don't have those concerns. I believe when he walks into that Yankee clubhouse, and he, he looks up to Aaron Judge, the team captain, and he looks up to Anthony Rizzo and the other strong personalities in that Yankee clubhouse. I think he'll quickly learn how to become a professional and how to succeed in New York. This is a guy that loves center stage. He's got a lot of energy and enthusiasm. He's a lot of fun to watch. I think New York fans are absolutely going to love him. But this is a huge deal for the Yankees because over the last several years, they've not been willing to trade top prospects to make a deal like this. And Brian Cashman making a statement right now. He knows how badly this team needs offense. He knows how badly they need to manufacture offense. Jazz Chisholm can do all of that. Yeah, Chisholm, a guy yes. who was a part of MLB The Show. So we know he's got that personality because he certainly was uh, on the cover of that game because of the fact that he certainly has that. Jim, I, I wanted to ask you about the fact that the Yankees are giving up a top catching prospect here and others to be named. As you said, uh, they're waiting to be informed that they've been traded. Are you satisfied with the price that the Yankees are play, are paying for, for a guy like Chisholm? Yeah, I mean, I think the Marlins are going to end up doing really well. I mean, look, they just got their catcher of the future in Ramirez, right? And if you're the Yankees, he was going to be blocked behind Austin Wells and Jose Trevino. So he really didn't have a path in the Bronx uh, to be a catcher. They like Wells better than they like Ramirez long term. So because he's blocked, he becomes expendable. That's why they were able to give him up. And on the other side, for the Miami Marlins, you know, that's a position they've been trying to solve for many, many years. And they, it, they finally were able to do it here uh, in this transaction. So in terms of Chisholm, so terms where does he fit into this Yankees lineup? Well, that's a great question. I'm, I'm waiting to hear from manager Aaron Boone of the Yankees. I have texted him to try to find out. I've not had an answer back yet. Uh, but I think the positional flexibility is huge. Now, remember, Glaber Torres is a free agent at the end of the year. So my guess would be that Jazz Chisholm will be the everyday second baseman of the Yankees, at least in 2025 and 26. In the meantime, the positional flexibility, I think, really works for the Yankees, right? They've had some injuries in the outfield. Chisholm is a guy that you could put in center field if you decide to, uh, because Aaron Judge could go to left with Soto and right. That would be one option. He can play second base. They can move Glaber Torres to third base. They might even trade Glaber Torres in a deal to get a third baseman like Isak Paredes of Tampa Bay. Uh, he can also fill in a shortstop if, they, if Anthony Volpe needs a day off. So I think the positional flexibility will play. My personal opinion is best position is second base, but look, you can put him at second, you can put him at center. It's his power, it's his speed that's going to play. So as we get so set for the trade deadline, we're starting to see these moves come. Where do the Yankees sit now in terms of addressing areas of need? Yeah, now they go to pitching, right? Now they go to the bullpen. Now, interestingly, they were hoping to get Tanner Scott in this deal with Miami. Now, apparently, based on the information we're hearing, they did not accomplish that in this trade. But that was a target that they had. So one thing is very clear. The New York Yankees are not done. They did get the bat they were looking for. Now they're going to focus on the pitching end of things. All right. So in terms of uh, the other New York team, which uh, we were talking to you about a little bit earlier, Kodai Senga, Looks to be out for the regular season uh, in terms of the Mets. That strain left calf injured running off the mound after an infield pop-up during his season debut on Friday. So, Jim, we're, as we're talking trade deadline, how does this affect what the Mets' plans were at the deadline? Yeah, I'm being told they're going to pivot now. Now, what they were planning on doing was adding relief pitching. They already added Phil Maton. They already added Ryan Stanek. 
That was their goal going into the deadline. But this injury news today that he's out for at least the regular season is having them uh, shift their plans, and they are now going to go after a starting pitcher. I'm being told most likely landing spots would be either Jack Flaherty of the Detroit Tigers, Eric Fetty of the Chicago White Sox. I asked if they were going to pursue the top end of the starting pitching market. That's Garrett Crochet of Chicago, Tariq Skubal of Detroit, or Blake Snell of San Francisco. I was told unlikely. So it's the next tier of pitchers that they'll be chasing down. But one thing's for sure, the Mets are in the middle of a pennant race. And David Stearns is going to do what he can to try to get this team in the playoffs. And it's something, of course, that we know you'll be keeping an eye on and an ear to. Our MLB insider Jim Bone, the former general manager, joining us here on HQ, talking about the big deal today. The New York Yankees are set to acquire Jazz Chisholm from the Miami Marlins. Uh, certainly adding to the Yankees, giving them some speed on the base pass, and as Jim says, positional flexibility, which is a big attraction for the Yankees in this deal. In terms of the odds to win the World Series, Yankees odds right now sitting at plus 650 alongside their AL East compadres, the Baltimore Orioles, Phillies at plus 410, the Dodgers still the favorites at plus 320.